Uh, I don't have a presentation with me. What I have with you to share is my experiences with data on water sanitation. And it's nice to see a young crowd and therefore I hope my experiences will add value to your work which you are doing. Uh, see, uh, I started work in the NGO development sector from 1988 onwards. And at that time we didn't have digital data, we didn't have, we would often, you know, rely on uh, uh, the st state statistical abstracts, as they were called, and on the uh, district uh, uh, fact books and information. And I started in the NRM sector, forestry, watershed, agriculture. So I remember at that time, in the late 80s, or from the mid 80s, um, the data was essentially being used to show by the NGO sector at that time, what is the importance of wastelands? So what is the definition of wastelands? What is the extent of wastelands? And this calculation was done based on available data at that time, which was in terms, again I'm saying state statistical abstracts, district, district abstracts, which would classify land in different categories. Revenue wastelands, lands not made for agriculture, uh, housing, there were about seven, eight, and on that basis, it was used to classify uh, different agencies and individuals came up with an estimate of wastelands in India, and therefore to drive public investment and to drive NGO in in interventions in wasteland development. So, uh, what I would like to say is that it's important to understand who, for whom the data is being generated and who will use it. So, coming to uh, this example of water sanitation, uh, we had a water quality workshop. I was with WaterAid earlier and then I am currently working independently. Uh, I am also associated with this India Wash Forum and it's an advocacy organization. So, uh, uh, coming to this issue of for whom the data would be used, in uh, we had a water quality national conference in WaterAid in 2007 in which many people came and made presentations on water quality issues. But we were surprised to find that the best data on water quality was actually available with the Mines and Minerals Department. There was one lady who came from the Mines and Minerals Department and she was from Karnataka. And she said, you see, our data is based on the water quality testing which we do on the mining areas. But it's the best, it's most comprehensive because we do chemical and other parameters testing, which Central Groundwater Board doesn't do. And it's much better data, we maintain it, we use it. They don't do that, they don't share it either. So it's important to know who is for who is collecting. In order to get the best data, you also need to know, you know, which agency will be the most suitable one. It may not be the your nodal ministry or the nodal agency which collects the data. Um, data is also used for different purposes, but essentially it is used for management, research and by institutions and agencies. Now in the WASH sector, which is water sanitation hygiene, there is always this big debate that water sanitation contributes to health impacts and health impacts measured in terms of diarrhea reduction. So that has been the logo for generating funds and resources for the water sanitation hygiene sector. Now this is quite a debatable thing and uh, I mean it's very difficult. For example, um, the data itself shows that the diarrheal incidence has been falling over the years, of the 90s, over the decadal impact of diarrheal deaths has fallen dramatically actually. So different agencies are trying to uh, a certain extent and I think it's important for larger UN agencies like UNICEF to justify some, uh, uh, you know, uh, data which says that investment in uh, water sanitation will yield this kind of a result. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the, uh, the sector, uh, and currently there is this uh, issue of stunting and malnutrition, again, which is based on uh, econometric correlations. If you actually have to measure the impact on, of sanitation on stunting via malnutrition, you have to do it medically. You can't do it through uh, correlation of data. 
For example, what the rate is being done in the wash sector is that there are these districts, these blocks, which have a high open defecation, low toilet usage, and they also happen to be the districts and blocks where there is high malnutrition stunting. So you know, one proves the other, uh, which is very unscientific. So, but stunting seems to be the new focus for generating funds in the wash sector, just like the idea was earlier. Stunting is even more sexy in terms of its biggest contribution. And it's, it's again a matter of uh, knowledge and debate which needs to be uh, done. Um, in terms of data priorities, if you see in the water, water sanitation sector, <coughs> infrastructure and spending is what the government does, the ministry. They are monitoring spending and spending correlates with infrastructure. So their website monitors this kind of a data. Uh, when you look at census data, it measures access and maybe usage, but I don't know actually whether it, it says how many people are using which kind of toilets and which kind of water sources. Uh, but do they actually use it or is it just having access to them? Uh, then comes the usage and behavior change. Usage and behavior change is being done mostly by foundations, NGOs, and they look at sanitation change, hygiene behavior change as, as a focus. Uh, and the health impacts, as I said, are monitored by universities, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Some expert agencies who can do that. Just to end on this, the challenges, I believe in, in the data work on water sanitation hygiene, firstly is on actually measuring how much people want facilities in terms of water and sanitation. This should have been solved and done away with. And the entire subsequent <coughs> analysis of the search is based on this first question, but this itself is never addressed. There are certain parameters, 135 liters per capita per day in the urban areas, 40 liters per capita per day in the rural areas. These are accepted as that. And recently, when the urban Kejriwal government came in power in January here, we did a study in the East Delhi slums to assess how much water actually people want. Because there was this issue of 20 kilometers per month uh, free per household. And there was a lot of criticism of that. Even NGO said this is actually not uh, taking into account the environmental and uh, cost value of water. So we actually did a study in East Delhi where people said this is reasonable. So again, it is quite surprising that on a basic thing like this, without actually doing any analysis, people do, uh, without doing any survey, the people do an analysis. Uh, that is the first priority I still feel we need to assess because these things change. In Islam, if a Muslim is a Muslim, then you have to be able to So you know, that is the kind of things people say. So you actually need to assess how much water, and if they have a toilet, the usage of water is more. If they don't, then the usage is less. But that doesn't mean that is their requirement. Second, a priority is functionality uh, and more public infrastructure. Functionality, again, uh, Amit, Amit was showing that problem. How much is it functional? So if you go to a state like Jharkhand, where functionality of platforms is very less. So on record, everything is functional. But and on practice, it is not. Uh, water quality, I've already mentioned the problems there. Um, higher level impact measurement. So behavior change is seen as the frontier of water sanitation measurement of impacts. But I would say higher level impact uh, measurements should look at the deeper barriers and constraints for behavior change. Not just whether people have knowledge, whether they have attitudes, whether they have practices. AAP is considered an arena for research. But uh, for example, in uh, in a rural Bihar research we did for UNICEF on behavior change, we asked these people, uh, because language is not a problem with us, so we asked this group of men, why don't you wash hands after, uh, do you wash hands after even a toilet use? But so, they said no. So we said why? So then they said, agar hum saaf sutre hoge, to bad So if we become too neat and clean, how will we actually do the work which we are supposed so then you have to hit at the deeper perception of their image, their self uh, uh, perception of what they are, rather than just giving them more knowledge and practices. And also look at social economic impact. 
plans. So those are not the priority. Priority is still on the health 